Welcome to Digital Asset News, where we take the top stories in crypto and break them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, I want to go over a couple of uh, pieces of news which really just escaped me. I didn't make a lot of sense then, but it really is making a lot of sense now as we see the market do pretty much nothing, just trade sideways. And I believe uh, a lot of people are front-running us. So first up, uh, we're going to talk about uh, State Street Bank with its trillions of asset center management getting into the crypto game, which is the same thing we've been hearing about from another large bank, BNY Mellon. Again, trillions of asset center management. And the whole story about what happened with uh, NYDIG and NCR, $6 billion as more banks, small to medium banks, get into the crypto game. And again, this didn't make much sense to me, but now I see it. The banks are front running us and they're really just putting all the infrastructure in and they don't really, I don't know if they're causing FUD, if they're kind of like just sitting in the sidelines, but I, I see a lot of big things happening, especially if so many banks are getting into it. And you better believe uh, they're not going to tell you what they're going to do first. They're going to do the things and then when they've made their profits, that's when they'll release it. So uh, I think time really is running out. So we'll take a look at those. And also as a quick reminder, World Mobile Token, which I've been talking about this channel for quite some time, uh, the uh, TG event is uh, down to 15 hours. So on July 4th, uh, it's going to uh, yeah, actually be able to get your tokens. If you're in America, sorry, you cannot be a part of it. You cannot be a part of it. And that's just how it is. You're going to have to wait until after this, because that's the good old US of A, not allowing people to get into any kind of sales like this. So sorry, I'm in the same boat. So we'll take a look at those things. And then, um, yeah, we'll go over that. But first, take a look what's going on uh, into uh, the market. So the market's doing pretty good. I mean, we're up to 1.44 trillion, but again, not a big deal because we were at 2.5 trillion. That's my goal. I want to see 2.5 trillion or even 5 trillion by the end of the year. People think I'm crazy, Psst, whatever. Uh, people thought I was crazy when I said that we hit a trillion dollar market cap and here we go. But um, so we got Bitcoin at 34,000. Let me blow this up so you can see what, I'm, what I see a little bit better. Anything great going on? Seven day change. Wow, Bitcoin's up 10%. It's pretty good. 24% for Ethereum. Ethereum's gonna pump, just so you guys know, uh, until middle July when EIP 1559 comes around, and then it'll probably fall back down. But I see Ethereum going up because that is what is supposed to help with the gas fees, and that's debatable, so we'll find out. Tether's Tether, nobody cares. Binance Coin, 10%. Cardano, 15%. Cardano was added to um, Grayscale's trust, so I think they're number three now uh, in the Grayscale trust, and they gobbled a lot of that up, so. Look, if you're looking for smart money, it doesn't get much smarter than Grayscale. They're the ones that bought Bitcoin back in like 2012, 2013. So if you look at, look at what they buy and then just kind of go from there. Not inv inv investment advice, that is investment opinion, like everything else I talk about on this channel. And uh, it's a pretty good day over seven days. So, and then for the one day, we're still up. So again, we got a long way to go to get 2.5 trillion, but that's what it is. So let's just jump into uh, today's uh, top stories. And then... This is a big story. And before I get into this, let me just say that I think that all these things that are going on with the banks, it's like I've been saying for the last two years in this channel, um, there is a time when all the money is made and it's not made when there's that big hockey stick and it all goes to the, to the, to the roof. That's when all the dumb money gets in. Sorry, it's just the truth. The smart money, this is it. This is the time when everybody just starts slowly accumulating, when it's super boring and everything's moving to the sideways and it's just totally unsexy. That's just how it is. And then people just don't pay attention. So like to me, I keep trying to beat this, this same message in and it's very few people that get it. So if you're watching this video, you're one of the few. Thanks. Um, invite me to your island when you make it. And this, I think, is going to make a lot of sense. So State Street, who are they? Why are they getting into crypto? Well, they're a huge bank, trillions of assets under management. State Street, a U.S. custody bank that oversees about uh, a measly $40 trillion in assets. <laughs> Yikes. Has launched a crypto division. State Street said it is expanding its digital reach to include crypto, central bank digital currencies, blockchains, and tokenization, and will upgrade its existing global link platform into a multi-asset digital trading system. Sounds good. I like that already. In April... Coindesk reported that State Street was working on a new trading platform for digital assets to set to go live mid-year through a partnership between the bank's Curanex trading tech provider and London-based Pure Digital. 
which develops infrastructure for foreign exchange trading platforms. That was boring, right? Uh, but they just pretty much played it down because at that time, State Street representatives played down the possibility that the bank would use the platform to trade crypto. No, we're not going to do anything like this. Why would they say that? Why would they be like, oh, you know, yeah, we're going to trade crypto, so you should probably get a bunch of crypto. No. They're like, no, 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 we're just testing some things out and maybe we'll get into it, but we're not too sure. Then all of a sudden they're like, wow, uh, that was the idea the whole time. And then here we are going, man, maybe Dan was right. Maybe we should have, you know, maybe front run these guys before they front run us. So digital assets are quickly becoming integrated into the existing framework of financial services. And it is critical. We have the tools in place to provide our clients with solutions for both their traditional investment needs, as well as their increased digital needs, State Street CEO Ron O'Hanley said. So that's just one piece of the puzzle. And then to finish this up, State Street was appointed as the fund administrator and transfer agent of the Van Eck Bitcoin Trust. Guess what Van Eck is doing right now? They just submitted, well not just submitted, but they're one of the big ones that submitted for a Bitcoin ETF. And from the rumblings that I hear, it's actually gonna go through. Now. Do not take that as gospel. That is just rumor, cheese may, whatever you want to call it. But I hear for some pretty big people that it's going to happen. And that's the whole one of the holy grails we've been waiting for for a long time. A Bitcoin ETF. I don't see the big deal. I can still get it, but that is one of my major flaws. I just assume everybody's like me and they go to all these different exchanges and all these whacked out uh, <laughs> DEXs and get their crypto. They don't. There's a lot of people out there. Do not do that. They want an ETF. They got a lot of money on the sidelines. That's fine. I'll take uh, all the money that you want to throw at me. Lastly, when BNY Mellon entered the crypto space, that pretty much forced State Street to get involved. Who are they? Well, they're these guys. BNY Mellon to offer Bitcoin services. Bank of New York Mellon, the nation's oldest bank, said Thursday it will begin financing Bitcoin and other digital currencies. It will eventually allow digital currencies to pass through the small financial network it currently uses for more traditional holdings like U.S. Treasury bonds and equities. Now, granted, this was on February 11th. So who is it BNY Mellon? Why do I care? Why should you care? Well, they're also another big player in the game, and they've got 41 trillion assets under custody and or administration, 2.2 trillion assets under management. Are all these uh, assets going to go into cryptocurrency? No. Are some of them? Yes. And if you just take a 5% here and a 10% there from all the different banks that are getting in, it's a pretty big piece of the pie on top of the retail investor, which leads me to my next point. So we've got this thing called NYDIG and NCR. We've covered this uh, at length many a times. I'm just going to paraphrase this. 650 US banks will soon be able to offer Bitcoin purchases to 24 million customers. There was a deal between payments giant NCR and NYDIG, and they're going to allow community banks and credit unions to be able to offer their clients crypto trading through mobile apps built by the payment provider. Why? Why are they doing all this? They've already got all the fiat that they want to, fractional reserve lending. They've got, they're riding a gravy train with biscuit wheels. Why would they want to get into cryptocurrency? And the reason is, is because as it states here, and which makes a lot of sense to me, they are tired of seeing crypto purchases made from their accounts to outside exchanges, basically just letting everything just go away. By providing these clients a way to buy Bitcoin and eventually spend it within their existing accounts, the traditional financial institutions are part of a rising tide of those companies in direct competition with cryptocurrency exchanges. So look, financial opinion, not financial advice. But when I see these articles of these huge banks getting into, in 2017, when I got into it, if we had heard of any bank really getting into it, we would have lost our minds and it would have it would have gone over a trillion at that point, and we only hit 860 billion. Now it's just the news after the news after the news of positivity. So why isn't the market going up? Well, some people say it's overvalued. Some people say that the people are front running. Some people say that there is a lot of manipulation. Uh, I can't tell you. And then, of course, some people also say that people are taking profits, which I think is, is a pretty good point. I think it all comes down to this. Is it overvalued? Maybe. But if you look at what's going to happen in the future, I mean, that's the whole point of investing, right? You invest into the future. I'm not investing in today. Does Cardano do everything as far as like smart contracts and dApps? It doesn't have smart contracts functionality. 
So no. And then with Ethereum, is it able to provide everything? No, it's not. And it, and it slows down and it's clunky and it's, it's expensive. And can Bitcoin really be used as a currency and globally? No, it can't. And it's so volatile, but it doesn't matter. We're looking for the future. If you're looking for something small and like right now, that's called trading and day trading and swing trading and do all that stuff. Um, that's not me. I'm just looking out for the future. And I think the banks, they've done pretty well for themselves and they also see the future. And that's why they're investing into this. So my theory is, I think they're front running us. I think they're just kind of letting everything fall by the wayside. You even see uh, people, uh, who is it? Not, not Druckenmiller, uh, Menard from, uh, from Guggenheim. He's uh, the CIO over there, and they've got trillions of assets under management, I believe. Correct me in the comment section. Another old financial institution. And he's been sending out tweets about, you know, it's very volatile. And no, it's, it's almost like a tulip bubble. But yet, they have cryptocurrency services and coming in. So I don't believe any of those guys anyhow. I think it's time to really take a hard look and just know exactly where things are going. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. And let's finish up with our last piece. So, let me come over here. Ah, World Mobile Token. Ah, this is one of my favorites. I like to do good and do well. And it's uh, pretty easy to do that with something like this. So, World Mobile Token, as I've been talking about this before, uh, this is the one that uh, they have, it's like a two for they put infrastructure in to sub-Saharan Africa. They've already done it in uh, Tanzania. They're moving into Nigeria. They're putting uh, telecommunication towers and electricity with the solar panels. That's the first part. The second part is uh, they do everything on the blockchain for the digital ID built on the Cardano network. And it's going to have a token generation event coming up on ba -ba -ba, July 4th. So there's a lot of questions about it about can Americans participate? What does it look like as far as like week zero through five? How much can I get on these weeks? What is the maximum tokenomics? So we did a video about um, World Mobile Token over on Dan Clips. Dan Clips is, a, is our second YouTube channel where we take a look at, into like uh, advancements in crypto and uh, projects that really aren't mainstream or in our world yet. So uh, check that out. I'll, I'll link it in the description below, but you can find a lot of good ones we've done. We did World Mobile Token. We took a look at another uh, projects that are built on Cardano, uh, Indigo, um, the Oracle one called Charlie. We've also taken a look at uh, uh, Meld, which is really interesting, uh, Card uh, Launchpad, uh, uh, Card Starter, and then Silo. It isn't built on Cardano, but it is, I think, going to be big. So uh, I'll link all those in the description, but what I wanted to know was some of the questions that I left out of this video, which was pretty encompassing, I thought. So I got Cedric from World Mobile Token to answer some questions. So let's jump into that quick six minute interview and uh, let him answer all those things. So everybody, welcome. So uh, what I did was I had a couple questions about what was going on with uh, World Mobile Token and this token generation event or TGE. So I reached out to the group and thankfully uh, Cedric came on, who's one of the advisors over at WMT and he is my contact for what's going on. He's kind of like my insider. So Cedric, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Rob. Pleasure to be here. So these are the questions that I get a lot. And these are questions I have in my head too. So talk to us, because I know we're going to have, I mean, the vault was already generated. People already went to the website. They generated their vault. Talk about this token generation event, because I think everything starts July 4th, right? Yeah, yeah. If you haven't created a vault, you have time to do it for the entire six week duration of the token sale. So go to the site worldmobiletoken.com and make your vault. But this is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's the TGE, yeah. which officially opens for token reservations on Sunday, July 4th at 11 a.m. UTC. So like, so just so everybody knows, 11 a.m. UTC. Americans, I'm sorry, you cannot participate because of regulatory issues. So that's why the UTC thing uh, goes in. So, okay, so 4th of July, Everybody goes in the vault so they can come in. But this is the thing that, was, that confused me. You guys have week zero through week five. What happens on week zero? How much can people buy as far as the uh, world mobile token? Because I think, I think the max supply is 2 billion, right? The max supply is 2 billion, but there's only 200 million tokens available for the public sale. The rest are locked and, and going to be you know, distributed over a 20 year span. Um, yeah. On week zero, for the sale, we limit 
how much of that 200 million public sale allotment is sold to 25%. Okay. So that's, that's uh, week zero. The first one, the first, the very first week. So we can't sell out on the very first week. And that's because on week zero, you can only buy up to 2000 USD worth of the token. And as soon as we sell 25% of that sales supply, that week is closed. Great. So what is the, what is the token going to be offered at initially for the price? Uh, 20 cents, 20 cents, no matter what week you buy, uh, 200 million WMT available for the sale for a maximum public sale market cap of 40 million USD. Gotcha. Okay. So the first, so week zero, essentially people can buy 2000 and they're putting up 25% of the 200 uh, million, which makes sense. So we're looking at like, you know, 50, if my math is right, about 50 million uh, tokens that very first or week zero. Week one, then how much can they buy right, if they want to get we into this? Week one, we raised the cap very, very drastically to $100,000 USD available to purchase in the token. Uh, and there's no cap, so that could sell out. And interest is super high, so I, I would definitely be trying to get in by week one for sure. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's... That's one of those things because when I saw it, I was kind of concerned. But then the thing that I, I remembered is that it's the 200 uh, million uh, that is only going to be offered right now. And the rest is locked up over 20 years. So I'm okay with that because we've seen a lot of projects come in and they're like, yeah, we're just going to dump everything right now and everybody gets to it. So whales control it. That's not good. So this one makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. So we talked about uh, Americans. They can't participate. However, a lot of people on my channel are Americans. When can they get their hands on WMT and where? So yeah, we get, we get a lot of question about exchanges, not only Americans and Canadians, but just regions that were restricted from the TGE. Due to the TGE taking place right now, we can't really talk about exchanges, um, but I envision a ton of decentralized exchanges coming to Cardano after smart contracts are released. Yeah. And we already see like 10 in active development and they're all competing to release first. Um, so that, that's definitely a positive sign. I can't discuss any plans for a centralized exchange, but what I can say is that being a Cardano native asset and a project backed by IOHK, uh, that's definitely a possibility. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to reach out to, I know you can't tell me, but I'm going to reach out to some of these, these DEXs uh, for Cardano. I've got some things lined up with them for interviews. I'll just go ahead and ask them and maybe they can tell me. That's good. Cedric, I'm fine with that. And then lastly, so the whole project there was, it initially came off in Tanzania and it was pretty successful. You guys set up solar panels. You guys set up the uh, pods to give telecommunications and internet to that village, which was the last mile. Have you guys done anything since then uh, to, to branch out in Africa? So yeah, especially with this, this token sale starting and, and going to conclude in the next, the next few weeks, uh, our team is getting ready to roll out massively across Zanzibar and Tanzania which are the two regions that we were already in and working in. Yeah. Um, but then also Kenya, the rollout of Kenya is a brand new plan that we are currently developing. And you heard it here first, we never said that to anybody yet. <laughs> so, um, but we have equipment on the ground right now uh, to Zanzibar, uh, some more coming through Air and Sea, and our implementation manager is there already. And then also uh, we have a film crew in, well, we have two film crews in Ethiopia and London right now, and they're both leaving for Tanzania next week. And included in those film crews are maybe some BAFTA award-winning videographers. So like throwing that out there that <laughs> the videos so. are going to be, they're going to be super, super beautiful videos. Uh, within six months, we should have connected tens of thousands of people and we'll be publishing videos of that entire journey uh, along the way. Okay. Well, it sounds good. This is a, because to me, like I'm always looking for, for two things. One is to do good, which is, you know, nice. We don't want to do good things for people. And the next thing is do well, right? Mashinsky always talks about this one. So I stole it from him. So do good and do well. I like this project because it's actually doing something already has real world utility. And uh, I can see why the demand is, is high. So anyhow, so everybody, uh, first of all, Cedric, thanks for stopping in and taking the time. And then for you watching at home, I'm going to link in the description all the different uh, links that you would need for World Mobile Token, worldmobile.io, so you can uh, take a look. And also you can generate your vault. And maybe if you want to participate, uh, look in there. Now, again, this is just an investment opinion, not investment advice. Uh, do your own research. But me personally, I am uh, uh, pretty excited about this whole project. Unfortunately, can't do much, uh, you know, American. All right, Cedric, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, let's jump back.
Thank you. All right. So thanks, Cedric, for uh, answering all those questions. That helped out a lot for me, hopefully for you, if you're looking at that. Again, uh, do your own research. Take a look really hard at what you want to invest into. This is what uh, I will be getting into uh, when it becomes available to uh, Americans. And again, uh, as you know, I'm an advisor to this project. So I try to you know, help them navigate the whole social media platforms and things like that. And uh, But I will be getting into them when uh, majorly, when I actually absolutely can, which that, that is what it is for Americans. And then lastly, uh, don't forget that uh, you know, if you come into the queue, and you're looking to to purchase you can never go down for your number so if you get in your number is like 106 for week zero on week one it'll still be 106 and if other people drop off uh, you'll still be in that number and you can never lose your spot or go down but you can only increase if other people drop out or decide not to buy so that is what is going on and uh to me i think it's a pretty big project all right so that's it so if you made it to the end first of all thanks for watching all the way i appreciate it if you like the video uh, give it a thumbs up give it a like also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are time sensitive. And that is it for today. So enjoy your weekend. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.